Last talk of the FOSM 2017 distributions, Deborah. Thank you very much. Um, and I would like to introduce Peter Robinson talking to us about using Fedora for IoT. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm sorry for stopping you from your beer. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk about architecting a secure IoT platform using a generic distribution such as Fedora. Um, so the Internet of Things um, has the potential to change the world, not necessarily in a good way. Um, and um, Linux distributions have been around for some time and have um, a lot of the dealing with security and CVEs and updates and um, distribution mechanisms and all that sort of fun stuff long solved and relatively straightforward. Um, and so why can't we use the um, current knowledge um, to continue to evolve and improve the IoT to make it a, a little bit friendlier um, place? For, um, for the world as a whole. Um, this is a general overview of an IoT stack. Uh, one of these days I'll actually get around to doing this uh, graphic myself because as someone pointed out, it has a uh, Cortex-M series which you can't exactly run Fedora on. Um, so what would you use as a base platform for IoT if you were to use it for Fedora? Um, well, the first technology there is a tech called um, Atomic or OS Tree. It enables a single um, snapshot upgrade, snapshot rollback um, of a distribution in an atomic state. So if you boot a device with an update and it doesn't boot or it doesn't have network connectivity, you can run a series of health checks um, and reset back to the old version. So you should never get into a situation where um, you have a brick device or an uncontactable device or a device that doesn't have access to all its sensors. Um, you'd obviously need a very good focus on security and multiple architectures. Um, obviously x86 is a fairly widespread um, with a bunch of IoT, but obviously ARM and more so these days, ARM64 is certainly um, a, a series of well-known architectures that are um, deep into the IoT space. Um, um, so, and, and that's basically my role, is to build a IoT platform um, using Fedora as a base as part of my job at Red Hat um, to help define we're going to initially focus on a gateway platform, um, both industrial and home and various other use cases, um, and focus on a handful of devices, although um, it will work on pretty much any device that um, support, uh, is supported by Fedora. Um, but, yeah, so we, like in the ARM space, we probably support uh, two, three hundred different ARM devices these days, but it's um, a lot of work to be able to polish each and every one of them. So um, we'll focus on um, the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 because obviously they're very popular. Um, the solid run Hummingboard Edge devices, um, which are um, the first version of the Lenaro Lite reference platform. Um, the BeagleBone variants, because they're quite good for IoT. Um, Intel Dual platform from an X86 point of view and a Pine64 from an um, AR64 point of view. Um, but it's sort of still a bit up in the air and will evolve it as things happen. Um, yeah, so this is basically an overview of what the gateway will be based on a minimal atomic base image with containers to add functionality. Um, and in the F26 cycle, we'll focus on um, some example containers like an MQTT um, container um, and, and also various different 
um, networking technologies, both wireless and wired, such as uh, um, 802.15.4, Bluetooth LE, um, and various other open standards. Um, obviously, security is a very um, important and poignant point when it comes to IoT, um, and um, there'll be a focus on things like um, UEFI or OPT um, as, as part of a secure boot and verification. So th from the moment the processor boots, um, whether it's using um, TPMs on x86 or um, ARM trusted firmware and various other technologies like that from the ARM platforms um, to give us the ability to verify the entire OS through the boot process to make sure it hasn't been compromised. Um, dependency minimization. There's not generally no real need to ship um, three or four TLS stacks, for example. Um, if you can ship less, you've got less sort of coverage and less chance um, of major CVEs and compromise. And things like um, SEC Comp and SE Linux, um, toolchain related functionality, um, sandboxing, um, various system D functionalities and the kernel self-protection project. There's a bunch of different sort of um, initiatives there um, that are helping secure um, and reduce so um, and even eliminate entire um, types of um, sort of compromise. Um, and then Obviously, with containers, um, you can namespace them and isolate them, um, which means each sort of individual secure service that's running is in an isolated context um, with either access control or proxy or what have you to be able to access different parts of the network or different components. Um, different network isolation technologies um, device isolation and policy routing um, on the gateway level to ensure that um, if you've got an entire class of device that you don't want to connect to the internet that you can identify whether it be via MAC address or OS fingerprinting and things like that you can set up policy routes um, to either null route them or isolate them to ensure that you know that if, if you're acting as the gateway that these devices can't become part of a botnet or other such. Um, network support, um, focus on open standards, so things like 802.15.4 rather than proprietary technologies such as Zigbee and other um, sort of lock-in technologies where you've got a license or patent or what have you. Um, six Lopan um, a, as a IP protocol um, and, and various other, and things like older technology such as RS-485. Um, someone was asking me about Modbus the other day. Um, CAN support um, for controller area networks, um, et cetera. Um, so this is a sort of general, typical wireless IoT topology um, as a sort of just a general overview. And so this will be the sort of um, initial focus point um, from my point of view with Fedora IoT. Um, and some sample containers, um, OpenThread and other networking services, um, MQTT and various other messaging stacks, um, caching modules and various middleware and then a selection of um, possible IoT specific stacks um, there's been a couple of people that have been slowly packaging up Node-RED and each time a new release comes out they add a few hundred extra dependencies. I'm fairly certain they um, now depend on over 50% of the, uh, the Node.js sort of uh, repository stack which is I believe one of the largest repositories in terms of pure numbers of libraries on the internet. So um, it's it's a very interesting project, but it's vast in terms of, I think they've already packaged up something like 500 different Node.js dependencies, and there's still only a smaller way there. So um, 
we, we may look and see if we can just pull that in and run it container style um, in the short term while we get all of that done. Um, plus, um, there's some interesting um, IoT projects coming out of the Apache projects such as Kura and Hono um, and similarly related projects. Um, Soleta is an IO, uh, Intel IoT project which is already packaged up in Fedora um, and, and there's a number of other ones that people have shown interest in. Um, so are we just doing a gateway? Um, initially yes, but um, it's just a starting point as a, a means of doing a proof of concept and driving focus. Um, I have a tendency that if I'm not focused on something in particular, I have lots and lots of ideas and I'll deliver little bits of lots and lots of ideas and we won't end up with something that's particularly useful. Um, it gives us a good starting base um, to build both the, pro the different options but also the community around. Um, and it'll be a combination of industrial IoT and home um, because there's a lot of people in interested in the home side of things but obviously Red Hat from a commercial point of view is more focused on industrial and medical and other such um, sort of industry um, gateways. Um, and it'll be initially a proof of concept as a testing platform. Nothing set in stone, it will evolve and change um, as necessary and as, you know, people discover things. Um, what other options? Um, imaging stacks, I've had a bunch of interest around um, different um, sort of embedded devices with cameras used for whether it be security and detection of like movement or um, other sort of OCR style rec like recognition or image recognition and various other stacks like that. Um, and, and there's some other interesting projects where um, we're having some discussions with, um, there's an AI platform called Mycroft which is open source um, and they're very interested in working with us um, to do some IoT related stuff and um, numerous uh, too numerous many ideas to mention, like I come up with a different idea every other day, so. Um, so, yes, in summary, um, I feel Atomic is the right way to go in terms of updatable, secure um, devices, uh, multiple architecture support from the outset, um, initial reference devices with focus, um, and a base platform and gateway functionality <laughs> to start with. Um, any questions? So uh, you talked about uh, dependency reduction, so you wouldn't have, as you say, too many libraries. So that involves not using the standard Fedora builds, but you're uh, no, no, we in, a, in a slightly different way to get a minimised kind of pile. Is that the idea? Um, so to repeat the question for those that might be watching online, um, does the dependency minimisation um, result in different Fedora? packages or forks of the package, no it doesn't. We'll be working with the maintainers of those packages um, to ensure that that's the case. Um, and, and there's already other initiatives as part of... Build your atomic thing out of standard Fedora. Yep. Yeah, the intention is to be 100% within Fedora. Um, we're still in the Fedora 26 time frame. It'll probably be part of the Fedora Playground branding, but the intention is to have it um, eventually as a fully um, accepted, similar to works, workstation and server and cloud and atomic, um, the different projects there. The intention or hope from the discussions that I've had with the FPL is basically to sort of have it a fully um, core part of Fedora, or at least potentially. You mentioned that you have a specific set of reference devices. Um, you also have a specific set of transmitter or stuff like that because all the reference devices normally don't have any support for CAN or 1504 or something like that out of the box. So that might be you need extra hardware for that. So you have a specific set of devices there as well? Or? Um, so the question is around the reference device support and um, specific hardware support within those devices? Well, the different uh, protocols you want to do, like wireless or wired or whatever. Um, 
so by default, I think all of those reference, well, most of those reference devices either have wireless and Bluetooth or options of. So um, like the Raspberry Pi 3 has both wireless and Bluetooth. Um, the Hummingboard has options of wireless and Bluetooth. Um, the BeagleBone now has a couple of different models that come with both wireless and Bluetooth. Um, the vast majority of them already have CAN support, actual onboard CAN controllers, except for maybe the Intel Dual, but at least all the... So the IMX6 has CAN, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have CAN, um, so it'll depend a little bit on the device. Um, and depend a little bit on the matrix of what we decide to support initially. Um, and we'll adjust devices and uh, support matrix as we go. Yeah, just wondering, because for 15 or 4, for example, I only know one board that is supporting it all in Zbox, or the other ones have like added uh, receivers for that. And so Bluetooth is more or less the same, because you might have a Bluetooth module on speaking no energy or something, but it might not be 4 or 2 or maybe even 5 at some point or so. Yep. You might need the formation that's working on so on. So you might need to have some extra hardware. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so in the case of like 802.15.4, there's two or three devices that come with it on board. Um, but um, some of the different controllers are better or worse supported upstream. Um, and there's a couple of USB ones that are very well supported, which are and what... So, so yeah, so um, it, it, initially it'll probably be, like, I personally have interest in the 802, uh, 802.15.4 stuff um, and I have a bunch of different devices at home with it on board. Um, and then, but we will probably say that, like, initially until there's more hardware shipping that will, you know, recommend the USB um, In the security stuff, one thing that uh, was missing was the, any like connection, any communications over the internet. There was no mention of like SSL certificates and like Let's Encrypt or something would provide a way to ensure that you have trusted and known certificates. Um, so the question is around uh, securing SSL or TLS-based services outbound to the internet. Um, it's not explicitly mentioned on the slide deck, um, but it's essentially um, service by service. So in the case of MQTT, it supports that um, out of the box depending on which broker you're using. Um, the underlying base platform, other than uh, pulling down like the updates, um, won't have any outbound services um, to note, and then each one will depend on the container that it's running on. Does that answer your question, Dennis? Not really. <laughs> on your picture, there was like a remarkable number of devices connected, and that raises the question, what's about the management approach to that, monitoring approach to that? Is there something specific which atomic cost brings into that? Um, so the question is about the management of vast amounts of devices. Um, at, at the moment, Atomic doesn't have a general story there, but it is also being worked on as part of that team. Um, so the intention is there to consume their standard mechanisms of dealing with it as it's developed. Um, it's certainly something that's on my roadmap. Uh, management of devices, managers of devices connected to the gateway, um, control of those devices, centralised policies, centralised updates, um, and yeah, it, it's probably something that I should put on the slide deck, um, but it's certainly something that's like in the future. If you look at the uh, history of OpenWRT or Lide as it's called nowadays, it, is there anything like lessons learned uh, from your position? Are you interested in uh, taking another approach in some way? Is there any conceptual difference? Um, so the question is um, looking at projects like Lide, OpenWRT, whether there's um, intention to do lessons learned from those sort of projects? Um, what are the problems you have identified there and are you uh, 
taken another approach to, to tackle that? Um, possibly. Um, some, some of this is still research. Some of this is, um, this is the way we're doing it in Fedora. There's certainly um, different approaches that we can look at. Um, there are, I mean, projects like OpenWRT have been sometimes effective at dealing with things like security updates um, and sometimes not so effective due to um, political and social issues within the project. Um, like they're quite often a long way between releases. Um, so um, there's absolutely um, things to learn and there's absolutely um, ways we can change things to make it better. And um, the intention sort of there is to get something working and then evolve as we go. I'm uh, so familiar with the atomic thing, so maybe this is a long question to answer, but uh, you said you had atomic rollbacks. Mm -hmm. Has that actually implemented, given that you're working from standard packages? What, what's doing the... There must be something outside the image to do the new image upload. And That's part of the atomic functionality. And... Where does it live? I think you need to explain OS3 and Atomic Pickle rather than assuming people know what they are. True, but I don't think we've got enough time to do that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> OS3 is a system that you, you can feed in RBMs or just binaries and it makes a snapshot that stores things in a Git like manner and so it enables you to, you have different wraps and you can just boot the previous wrap. Like as part of the command line options, you set the root file system that points at the wrap. And so the atomic rollback is that you still have the previous version installed and you just boot into that as opposed to. Yeah, so it's like, like the update is like a delta between the two, and you just. OS3 is the essential technology. Yes. That yeah. And, and I mean, that's not, that's, that's not RPM specific. There are projects that are using it. So like Endless Mobile is using it um, on a Debian-based distribution for their OS as well. Could you use OpenShift to manage some of that stuff? Uh, the question is, could you use OpenShift to manage some of that stuff? Potentially. Um, I mean, OpenShift is based on Kubernetes, and Kubernetes is sort of like cluster technology, so um, you could probably use applications running on an OpenShift platform um, a as a management thing, but OpenShift itself, I'm not sure, would be um, at least out of the box as it stands now um, necessarily useful. But certainly, like, for IoT backend platforms, OpenShift is, like, the perfect candidate for running those side of things, um, but not, on, not so much on the actual device. Any more questions? Excellent. I'll let you all go and get beer. <laughs>